We're talking about notice the need today. My brother and my sister, yes, there's a lot of needs out there. There's a lot of things happening out there and we, that can scream at us. A lot of things, wars and rumors of wars and poverty and no food and corruption and whatever you want to call it. And that can become such a loud voice, such a loud voice. And especially in the church. And that's where the problem will be. Because in the church we're supposed to have the voice of God. But you're supposed to notice the need, otherwise you're going to be irrelevant. You're going to be irrelevant. And too many times there was religious systems. How do they say so? So super spiritual, so super spiritual. That, that actually you know nothing. Actually you know nothing. Now, I want us everybody to, yeah, yeah if you can hand out uh, one rent. We're starting to give money away on Sundays. Um, Today it's only a one rent. Um, we must get you guys here, you know. <laughs> okay. Titan Jesus here in any keyword. So, each one will have a one rent. And what am I saying? My brother, my sister, this will be your excuse or your opportunity. Everybody say excuse or opportunity. So many people, so many testimonies. Of people that had something very insignificant in their hand. But then God just did this major thing. I mean, you all know the five loaves of bread and two fish, but we go, we'll get out to it maybe now. And you have a certain mentality, and this one rank can be from God, and you're thankful. But you can use your brain. God gave you a brain. God gave you logic. And he says, this is your excuse why you can do nothing. The guy that has tomorrow, he worked... 40 years and he was laid off because the company just closed down. He has nothing. He has a one rent for his wife and kids for food. <coughs> what must happen to his life? I'm saying to you, you know, hear from God. There's a man who's now in heaven and he started this egg business and one stage we did some prophetic 10 questions and it boiled down to he was like 500 million half a billionaire but you know how he started he decided when he was a teenager and he had struggles he had struggles he said I'm gonna sell something so he got himself some chickens and he got eight eggs when he realized I cannot sell eight eggs it must be a one dozen what is it Hussein one one dozen and uh, so he went he went to the shop, he bought four eggs, put it in, and he sold the 12 eggs. One dozen. Hello. That's how he started. Wow, well, how pathetic. Come on. You have only eight eggs. I can do nothing. I can do nothing. Not one of you, but other people. Half a billionaire. Oh, he had all this opportunity. Some guys, they just have this opportunities. And you can have that pathetic, pathetic excuses, always pointing a finger. There's a need out there. There's a need in your heart. There's, a, there's needs, but you need to look at the needs according to how God will look at it. What is, what is God going to do with this one rent? You write, you put it there. And if this one rent means that you must put it there for 30, 40 years, somewhere in your lounge or wherever, and you will remember that your children, your grandchildren will never see what they have as an excuse. They will always, by the grace of God, see the opportunity. And nothing, according to them, some other lack will hold them back. Amen. Because they can know there's a God that will provide. But let's talk about that just now. Let's go with uh, the first scripture. He had compassion on them, so he began teaching them many things. By this time, it was late in the day, so his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, he said, and he's already very late. <coughs> Leave it there. It was all these thousands of people. Jesus had compassion on them because they were hungry men. They was there the whole day. This was quite a long service. Hours and hours and hours. A long service. And he had compassion on them and just gave them a lot of food. No, he had compassion on them and he taught them. 
So he compassionated them and the service was longer. Oh, next one. Send the people away so that they can go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered, you give them something to eat. They said to him, that will take more than half a year's wages. Okay, come on, guys. God expected you to take half of a year of your salary and says, you must do this. That's how they interpreted it. To say, oh, that's the only way it's going to happen then. Let us just explain to Jesus how much it is. So that maybe if he forgot, <laughs> we can remind him. Hello. When we can be very spiritually arrogant, um, even explaining to God what can and what cannot happen. God knew from the beginning. They don't have it. They don't have it. When God said, you give them something to eat, he knew. They cannot. My brother, my sister, God will many, many, many times, when you have to look at the need, it can destroy you, it can kill you, you can work and see what difference can you make out there with so many people don't have, not having food, all the corruption, all the this, all the that. You'll see the need. You're supposed to see the need if you're not selfish. But then you need to know what God is saying. Otherwise, the need will have a voice and you will be destroyed. You can give your life. I'm laying down my life for the Lord and you are serving the people and all their needs. And, and it's so genuine, but it's not God. You can go and go and buy all the food for half a year's salary. And then come and give it to the people. Very nice, very nice. But that was not God's will. And so many times we miss out, miss out, miss out on so many miracles, so many things that God supernaturally wanted to do through our lives. And we lay ourselves down and we are freck with what we need to do. Only because when we went to God, we said, God, I lay it down before you. And I walk away. It mustn't be my will anymore. I lay it down before you and I'm just going to be handed over. That's half of the gospel. I lay it. I give it over. And then you stay there. You stay there. You stay there. Till you know what God has said to you. They brought to him the five loaves of bread and two fish. And then they didn't walk away. Oh, we leave it up to the Lord. No, no, they stayed there. Are you with me? You give something over to the Lord. You stay there until you know what God is saying. Not until things make sense, but until you know what God is saying. Because you, there's good works God has prepared for you. And you can do a lot of good things. Good things. Laying down your life because of all the need. But it's all dead works. There's all dead works because God didn't tell you to do that. You need to go and do exactly what God has told you to do. Are you with me? There's one major, major, major need out there. And what is your contribution? Just tell your neighbor, what is your contribution? Hey, guys. What is, what is, it, what is the one rent that you need to give? Maybe tomorrow, God is sitting with that one rent, waiting for you. He's waiting for you at a place where you're supposed to sit with him for 15 minutes and pray for Israel. And God will do something for the peace of Jerusalem. The peace of Jerusalem is... With all the nations, because God's house will be a house of prayer. But the new Jerusalem that will come down, will come down over all the nations. The new Jerusalem, Jerusalem means the habitation of peace. Where God's peace will rule. God is the peace. Where God will rule. Where God was the city of God. Jerusalem. Where? It will be established in all the nations. Are you with me? Not in the physical Jerusalem. But still, may God help us. So maybe it's about you sitting with God and you just pray. And you feel just, I must pray for God there at the, at the border there at the sea um, with Gaza and what's happening there right now in Jesus. Now I pray for your protection over the Christians that right now they will make a difference. They will have the faith in Jesus' name to rise up so that five loaves of bread and two fish will just multiply. When they start to give out food, those guys in the name of Christ, they will be shocked at how God will provide through them. Uh, can, can you do that? Can that be part of your one rant tomorrow? That you do this type of prayer that was about uh, 1 minute 12 seconds. What about us getting more relevant? You need to notice, notice the need. And then when you notice it because you're, not uns because you're not selfish. 
then the danger you can get religious and freck in what you try to do or get discouraged before you try to do something because many times we see the need and then we are discouraged before even trying to think of what we can do but you run to God and you hear what he says and then he asks you to do the impossible if you haven't got anything yet where God asks you and demanded from you to do something radical that f- seems like ridiculous or impossible then I'm, I'm questioning how are you giving everything to before God are you just laying it before him and God I have this idea come and bless it and please to help this with help with that and there you walk off that's disrespectful that's arrogant but when you put it before God, God will tell you to do something. And unfortunately, many times, he will tell you to do something that is a little bit radical. So that he will get the glory. So that you will have to be dependent on him. So that everybody will see, you didn't do it, but your God did it. Who's this freaky guy from jail, man? Joseph. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot about him. Uh, just bring him. Oh, and suddenly he has the wisdom and what he can bring from jail. What can he bring from jail? What is in here? And he put it out there and the economy of the whole Egypt changed. Are you with me? Daniel, no, he will go. But the four kings, the four, the four most freaky heathen kings, they just submitted to the wisdom that came from heaven through Daniel. But against his will, he was just taken and, yeah, he's a good young man. Uh, you mean his friends, let's, let's take them. And God gave him the supernatural insight. God will help you. God will. He said to them, that would take, no, they said to him, that would take more than half a year's wages. And that's unfortunately sometimes where our prayer time ends. That we have peace because we settled it before the Lord. We had conversation. I wrestled with God and I laid it down because I realized it's not possible. God will not ask of me to do something impossible. It's, it's not in God's nature. It's not in God's love. <laughs> Next one. Are we to go and spend that much on bread and give it to them to eat? These crawler, half of them are not even serving you or have respect for you. They just came in to listen. They're not even yet church members. Okay. How many loaves do you have? Jesus said. He asked, go and see. He asked him, go and see. He said to them, go and see. Jesus saw it already, man, but he wants you to see. He wants you to see that actually you cannot do it. <laughs> he doesn't want you to see the provision. He wants you to see the lack. <laughs> how, many, uh, how many do you have? I want you to know that you know you cannot do it. I want you to know that in your own strength you cannot. But do you have the faith in me? I want you to know that you need uh, 11,215 rand, 12 cents, but you have only one rand. I know you only have one rand, but I want you to go and see. Jesus, go and see that you don't have it. <sighs> Jesus directed them. All right. He asked him, go and see. When they found out, they said, five loaves of bread and two fish then Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the green grass Jesus uh, um, we just told you I don't know if I communicated this right um, because five loaves of bread and two fish why do you want us to put them in groups of 150 just go with the flow of what the Holy Spirit tells you even if your mind is freaking out Next one. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks to who? To God the Father. Why? Because Jesus wanted to tell them, you know, it's Father God providing for you. He didn't have to. It's not like in every situation he just prayed before everything, but he took it and he thanked the Father because they must know the Father always provides. A father always provides. Not necessarily in the way that we want to see provision, but the father will always provide. Amen. Gave thanks and broke the loaves, and he gave it to them, to his disciples, to distribute to the people. Ah, ah. Now well, that's where the, where your, what about your name among the people? You're going to make a fool out of yourself, man. 
He didn't multiply from Jesus. And Jesus just threw it out. And all 5,000 got it. It happened through the hands of the disciples. The provision for the nation will happen through the hands of the church. If the church that has the... uh, grow up in, above immaturity beyond themselves and their needs and bring to God God the nation needs this the nation is desperate the nation doesn't have food what must we do with the corruption what must we do with the poverty what must we do with all the stuff all the people sitting in slavery and all this freaky lies that people just believe and the arrogance against you Lord what must we do And there's a we. Not what are you going to do. What are we going to do, Lord? Are you with me? And through the hands of the church, the miracles will happen. The provision will be be there for the church. But why do we not see that miracles for the people? Why is that provision for the 5,000 not there? Because somewhere the church is locked up in the religion in the past, not anymore in, in Jesus' name. I don't speak it over the church, but the church will become relevant. The church will grow up. The church will not be there for their needs. God, I pray in Jesus' name that you'll provide this for me and that for me. Help me with my debt. Help me with my this. You must do that because you're a child dependent on your father and you declare that I will be dependent on my father. But I'm not there just to put my orders in and then walk away. Okay, try to find your life According to the word, you, you, the word of God is against you. You try to save your life, you'll lose it. you lose your life, not because of patheticness, not because of working yourself frack in all the things that you try to do, but lose your life for his name's sake. Led by the Spirit, then you will have to lose yourself. If you're led by the Spirit, there is quite a lot of stuff that you will most frequently will have to lay down. Because we must grow glory to glory. More of his beauty, more of his beauty, more of his beauty, less of mine, less of me, less of me. You'll have to have guts to do that, eh? Are you here? And he gave thanks to the disciples and and told them to distribute to the people. It happened through their lives. Yes. Is that it? He also divided the two fish among them all they all ate and were satisfied that was 5,000 men but they, the women and the children were not counted so they were thousands of people thousands of people the miracles will happen if the church is willing willing not just to see the need and bring the need before the Lord but then stay with God and hear his agenda hear his sometimes ridiculous strategies and have the guts to go and do it even if you think you're going to look like a fool God will do it. God will do it. I told you the story 79 times already. Make as if you haven't heard it. But uh, this one guy, he was a medical doctor. Um, a lot of professional guys, but either in Brazil or Italy, somewhere there. Close to one another. And they, these guys on, uh, on Easter, they would go out and on this big dumping site, there were some gangs and they would go out and give, this, give some food. So some professional guys, like this guy testified, said, I go to funeral, wedding, Christmas, and uh, Easter. I go to church. The rest, I'm not part of it. But he did his good deed. And so he, with some, a lot of other professional guys, they went to give out food to this one gang. And then something happened, and the, both gangs rocked up the most feared gangs and they realized that there's going to be trouble now today there's going to be blood this is an hour hour and a half testimony in any case so he had to cut the meat that was his part others did the bread this one did this that each one has something to do and they rocked up and they said we're just going to pray god will need to help us guys not big portions just just And he started to cut. And the meat does not become shorter. Later he said he cut, but he cannot see how he cut because he's so crying, crying, crying. Realize this is God. This guy that is just intellectual about Christianity. They provided for both gangs and they had a lot over, like 12 baskets after 5,000 were fed. 
that guy and all those professional guys became radical, radical Christians. Because of that, they worked further with it. They, at the end of the day, they uh, built a whole place that was like for provision. And people can bring food and then they can feed the thousands. It was a big, very, very big place. The rubbish dump, not like South Africa. And they started to feed these people. And suddenly the kids that grew up on that dump started to write and write on the cars. And they realized but these guys are learning something. They got food. They, and then they started to school. Let me just stop it there. I can go on for another 15 minutes about it. It was just amazing, amazing, amazing. But these guys had to cry out to God and say, God, what now? <laughs> what now? And God just did it. Oh, man. May God help us. Because my brother and my sister, in the future, we're going to see it. There's scripture. There's about 666. And in the end time, you or your children or your grandchildren will be in the end time in that sense. And what is it all about? There will be a control. Control. You cannot buy. You cannot sell. There cannot be provision. It must will be controlled. And this system will tell you what will happen and what will not happen. And the Bible talks about all these things going to happen. But God never says that in the end time, don't worry. When you do this and this, I will provide for you when, when they con want to control. When you get the mark, you cannot sell, you cannot buy. So God, how are you going to provide? He didn't answer them. He didn't, he didn't give. Hello? But the same God did so many, so many things that when you are led by the Spirit, you will stand amazed. You will stand amazed. So the bottom line is to be controlled by the Spirit. Controlled by the Spirit. We will see so many, so many supernatural provision. We will see so many supernatural provision. How? By believing it? No. But if you have the faith, sit with God and hear it. Hear Him. Hear Him. Notice the need. But if you notice the need because you are unselfish and you see what's happening out there, it's going to destroy you if you don't run in the protection of God where you just find out what is your part to play? What is your contribution? What is it that you must do in whatever way? Are you still here? Okay, next one. As for the rich. Amen. For a pastor, that's uh, difficult if you must go and do this. As for the rich in this world, charge them. Don't encourage them. Don't ask them. Can you believe it? Charge them not to be proud and arrogant and contemptuous of others. Like what I have and they not. Yes. Next one. Nor to set up their hopes on uncertain riches, but on God. Charge them to do good, to be rich in good works, to be liberal and generous hearted, ready to share with others. Hey, sometimes with well, some of these guys, you don't want to offend them because if they take offense, oh, you just want to use me. Now, God wants to use you. But sometimes there's the freaky deception that those who are rich has authority and those who are poor does not have authority. That's rubbish. Simple fishermen. And they walked with such authority that the others were shocked because they were not the rich. They were not the guys with all these things around them. As if the riches give you stature, if the riches determine that you are somebody. And there's a deception out there. So the guy that's a poor man, you're getting something at least to do. But he could be a guy that has such an amazing authority. Jesus must pay taxes. Oof, and the disciples. Okay, where are we going to get the money? Are you guys poor? No, nothing like that. It's a time for opportunity. Okay, go to the fish. There will be some gold, gold coins in the fish's mouth. You know, if it's not Jonah, hey, it's some gold. Hey. <laughs> hey, man, it's a bargain. When you see a fish that want to... <laughs> That's not theology. Okay. Are you here? Ach, amen. Ach, amen. May God help you.
that in your mindset. Because first, if you have a mindset of the rich that has to do with a root of all evil and covetousness, then you are the type of person that says, because I don't have this, because I don't have that, because I don't have that, I am nothing. The poor can have authority over nations. It's the poor man that has absolutely nothing sitting in jail. The pathetic man is the pathetic man in jail. Just walks into the palace and says, this is it. This is it. This is what you must do. This is how that will work. And the economy of Egypt changed. And they are providing for all the nations around them to come and buy food. And that man, that pathetic poor jail, what do you mean a throng fool? I don't know how you say that. A jailbird. A what? Really? You have such a word? Okay. That, that, from there. That guy in jail, that very guy in jail, he cannot come out, nothing, nothing, nothing. He doesn't get authority in the palace. He walks with the authority that he already has. He just walked just to change address. Your address does not give you authority. But what is inside here gives you authority. Oh, come on, man. May God help you so that when you notice the need, he noticed the need in jail. And the next moment, the next moment, everybody say next moment. He's dealing with a need in the palace. You are faithful with a need in jail. You can be trusted with a need in the palace. So that the needs of a whole nation and other nations are met. So that the nation's economy change, so that they can serve the nations of God, the nation of God, to have food in the time of famine. Be careful how pathetic we can look at certain things. This is not right, that's not right. They don't have it. They have that selfish, this is wrong. There was a Peter, he looked at the need. And you know, these guys, they were enslaving these other guys. It was the Roman Empire. They come and they make like slaves of the Jews. The Jews will have just to do that. And if they are doing a little bit something wrong, they're going to be put in jail. They could be interrogated. This could happen, that could happen. They saw, he saw the need, Mr. Peter. And thank you, Jesus, that you are there for us. So when... But Jesus will set us free. He said about, talked about a kingdom that he will establish and the kingdoms of the world will, will, will fall. Hello? So when Jesus said, I'm going to die, he said, no, never over my dead body. Because he saw the need and what Jesus can do about the need in the whole nation, there's nobody so excellent. There's nobody with such a lot of power like Jesus. So all the kingdoms, the Roman Empire, everything will fall in front of him. Wow, that's a revelation. And then Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> because Jesus must fit into his need. He focused on the Roman Empire and the slavery and the this and the oppression and the that. And they taking everything and corruption and they take whatever they can take from the Jews. And they are being enriched, the Romans. And, and Jesus didn't set them free. He said, slaves, be slaves. <laughs> but do it as if unto me as the master. Wow, thank you, Lord. thought you are coming here to... to don't you see the need for us to be set free that we will not be slaves anymore? And the word says you are a slave to your flesh, to the devil, or unto the Lord. But there's one master. There's only one master that will take you into eternity. There's only one master that will let you blossom. There's only master, one master that will bring heaven down into your life. That's Jesus Christ. But you will be a slave of someone. You will be a slave to your pathetic opinion. You'll be a slave to your flesh. You'll be a slave to something. But you will be a slave to your own success. And success will have the voice that can lead you into eternity. Where everything is burned away and you are saved as through fire. Uh-uh. Not anymore. We're going to be a company of wise men and women. With wisdom the house will be established. The word says. You are, you are still here? All right. Next one. Whatever. Everybody say whatever. You ever heard that? I've heard that. 
Oh, he's not here. I don't know. Pass, no, pass me seen. Is that opie camera? Of after the camera. I was, oh, Lord, have mercy. But you ever heard that uh, from yourself or from children? And you say this, 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 and they say, whatever. Never heard that before, eh? <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> whatever. But this is the whatever of the Bible. <laughs> whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. No, I've ever get a better boss. I mean, a company, they are so corrupt, and there's just the corruption. I, there's what, and this guy never say thank you. He's always just on me. He's just picking on me. He's just misusing me. I see, I see. You, uh, you're giving all the reasons why you cannot do this for the Lord. One guy once came to me, but he was miserable, and he was just, oh, I cannot say vomiting. He was just like, bleh, throwing it out. But he was not impressed when I told him, so what did God say about it? He said, because of that, you don't have to do it anymore for him. <laughs> he knew the answer. So whatever you do, do it as if unto the Lord. God, I want to live for you. Don't, don't mean it when you sing it on a Sunday. When you pray, be careful. Because maybe you could be genuine in your prayer. And when you are genuine in your prayer, you could say, God, change me. <laughs> you could say, God, I surrender my life. Whatever, whatever, Lord, I want to do it for you. And then God could sing the whatever. Yeah. And the whatever is what the hell. I'm not going to do this. But you prayed it. You brought it over yourself with your prayer. And the problem is you meant the prayer. Yeah. And then God sent the situation so that you can be in the situation and say, whatever I'm going through now, I will serve you. I will do it as if unto the Lord. I will do it for you, Lord. <sighs> Are you with me? When I left medical school and in that time I, I gave classes, hey, 7 o'clock in the morning till 9, 10 o'clock in the evening. Uh, Siobhan's mother and her friend had class from me half past eight and nine o'clock to half past ten. Ah, oh, half past nine. Half past eight to half past nine. Yeah. So they always brought something to eat because they said I look really look muff. That was serious. they used other words, but in that time, seven o'clock to ten o'clock every day, and some classes Saturday, and sending up a, a theory, syllabus and drama, syllabus and perspective, and this and this, and doing the worship, and I, etc. Don't don't feel sorry for me, but get where was God putting me in the fire? And I was thinking I could have been a medical doctor with a this and a this and a this and a car and a this. Here I'm sitting, I'm giving these classes to over ninety students, and I'm hearing this song now for the. 120th time this week that nobody practiced at home. And I said once, what the hell am I doing with my life? I remember those kral wachis, kral eyes. But as I claim folkies, say sis taikronikis, small birds. Okay. They, and I, they just doing the thing there in the, in the tree and I just realizing you just do whatever God has called you to do. You just do that. And after six months, yes, I'm going now to, uh, to my sister in Holland. And my parents bought me a ticket. Whoa. But uh, all the six months of, of all the class fees, at least going to have some, uh, give me something so that I can live there and have something to eat and place to stay, etc., etc. And then the pastor called me in. He said, um, there's not enough um, money for salaries for the pastors. Um, they felt they will give it back to me, but they're going to use the, mo the money for the pastor's salary. I said, <laughs> he's just not even not right. He's pathetic. Where do you get that? At that stage, I not, didn't even have 10 rand for petrol. So I was from Agape walking. I remember that bridge to pick and pay a hyper. I was actually running because I only had a half an hour break to get there, buy some food and run back. And on the way back, I said, God, this is not right. This is not right. I was just like, this is not right. And as I went over that bridge that you look at the Investors Hospital, you know that bridge. Yeah, hopefully. 
You pass, pick up by hyper, you come, 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 you go over the bridge, and then you're going to turn left or right with that. Okay. And, uh, and you know what God said? Don't stress, my child. I will provide for you. No, he didn't say that. He said, so if you're not going to get anything, are you still going to do it for me? <laughs> I counted, I remember, ah, man, I counted the lamp pails. What is a lamp pole? Those ones. I went over the bridge. And when I turned to the right, I said, yes, Lord. But I know there's no offering acceptable before God if there's not joy in the offering. There's no joy in this offering. now. So I had to say it over and over. God, I will do it for you, even if I can don't get a cent. I've worked morning till evening every day. If I don't get a cent, and that must be for salary for some other pastor, it's okay. And uh, until there was joy in saying it, my brother, my sister, what are you going to do? If you're going to do it for the Lord, there better be joy in the offering. For the joy set before him, he went to the cross. You want to be like Christ, you'll better have that type of heart. Otherwise, what you do is dead works, man. It's the religion. Nothing is for God. So until there's joy in the offering, and one kilometer, two kilometers further, got, got home there for the next class, and the check with all the money, amount, amount on my bed. <laughs> God set me up. <laughs> Hello, are you with me? So God will withhold that, not because he wants to be nasty, but he wants purity in your heart. That what you do, when you're going to start this career, you're not going to do it for the money. You're not going to do it for provision. And even if you don't get a cent, do it for me. Whatever you do, do it as if unto the Lord. God could organize it, not the devil. Is he with me? We, 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 we carry on. Wait, wait there. Write this with this sentence. Don't let... Your factual, professional excuses. Don't let your factual, thank you for writing. Don't let your factual, professional excuses overrule your faith-based obedience. Don't let your factual, professional excuses overrule your faith-based obedience. Because we can have very, very, Good excuses. Those disciples, they had very good excuses. They were followers of the Lord, my brother, my sister. You said to have certain excuses here, and you don't think it's an excuse. It's just logic. They didn't find an excuse. They just shared their heart, just shared the facts with Jesus. Just shared the facts. Uh, uh, there's so many people, five little bread, two fish. That's how. Just sharing the facts. So you can put the facts before God, but you better hear the truth of what he has to say about this one rent, wherever you're going to put it. Because if, you, if this one rent is the prayer for your kids and your grandchildren, and you, put there and you put it there at the photos of your children and your grandchildren, you put it at the photo frame of your future wife, future wife. Don't put a photo in there. Just put the frame there. It's the frame for my future wife and seven kids. And you put the one rent there. I'm praying now already. My children will not find an excuse in any circumstance. They will always find an opportunity to do whatever they do as if unto the Lord. I'm giving you a prayer reminder. Aha, please, man. Are you with me? Please, please, go and do that. Right, last one. Lord, when did we see you hungry? When did we feed you or thirsty? Give you a drink. And when would we see you a stranger and invite you in or naked and clothe you? Hello? And the king will answer, truly I say to you, to the extent that you did it to one of these brothers of mine, even the least of them, you did it to me. When you did it to one of those significant ones, they don't deserve it because they wasted the money. They wasted the money like the prodigal son, the other son said, he wasted my father's money. How can we have a feast? How can we have a feast? And in the, his immaturity, busy with himself, he couldn't be part of the feast for the prodigals to come in. Are we that pathetic? 
older brothers that are so busy with ourselves, so busy with doing the right thing, working hard, but we don't have the maturity to have the same heart as your father that rejoices over the guy that messed up everything. Coming home, and he received like a standing ovation after he messed up everything. <laughs> Prepare your hearts because there's some freaky prodigals that cannot come into the church in the end time revival. Guys, there's some prodigals that cannot come in that you could feel this is not right, this is not fair, this is not this. this. Open your heart so that you see the need the way God sees it. That when you see the need, when you notice the need, that you better do that. When you notice the need, you say, God, what are you saying? Look at that, Lord. What are you saying to us? Are you, are, are you still here? I mean, you find Moses. Just leave it there. He saw the need. He saw how these guys would be just beyond the Israelites. And he got so fed up there. He thought violence is the answer. He didn't say that. But what did he do? He just struck the guy dead. And then God's promise was 400 years, then you will come from Egypt. And then it was 430 years. The whole nation had to wait an extra 30 years after 400 years for God to sort out Moses. That is not, how do they say, guns and roses with God and Moses, eh? <laughs> that it was, would be God and Moses and not Moses seeing the need. He had compassion on that man. And he's willing to lay down his life as, as a prince of, e of Egypt. Uh, doesn't matter what happened to him. But he was in the flesh. You can see the need, my brother, and out of frustration. You can kill the Egyptian and you will postpone God's provision for another 30 years. For the whole nation of God. Oh, man. Are you with me? There's a soul. There's a soul. He's going he's to be king. And there's a lot of enemy. There's a lot of enemy. And he's... His soldiers are getting discouraged because they're waiting for the service to start. Waiting for the pastor, Pastor Prophet Samuel, to come and bring an offering. But it's getting chaos and more chaos and more chaos and more frustration and some guys are leaving. But he wants the nation of God to win against the enemy. Oh, calling the devil in. So what happened? On the seventh day, Saul himself, himself... Brought the offering, not led by the Spirit, not led by the Spirit in seeing the needs, seeing the intimidation. He brought the offering just after that Samuel came. What did you do? What did you do? I saw, I saw the need. I saw the need. I saw that, that the people are dispersing, the, my, the soldiers are getting discouraged. And then I did something myself. No, then I turned to the Lord. But he did something that the Spirit didn't say. And then Saul, Samuel said, you've lost your kingdom. God would have established your offspring. Now it will be taken from them. From your kids, from your grandchildren, and from you. You lost everything. Oh, man. You see the need? You see the need? <laughs> be very careful. Moses saw the need and he was a man of God. Saw, him, saw God face to face. Saul saw the need and lost everything in what he did. Peter saw the need. We talked about that. To be set free from the Roman bondage. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. We talked about Joseph. Sarah notices the need. What need? God, you are, you are, you are standing on God's promises. And you're standing on the promises, standing on the promises. And nothing, nothing, nothing happens. It must happen through Sarah. And Sarah, every day... See and look at her body and realize, I cannot have kids. And in two weeks' time, even more, I, I know that I cannot have kids. And in one year's time, really, really, I cannot have kids. So the possibility for God's promises to be fulfilled through me is actually zero minus one minus five. So I will lay down my life and ask one of my maidservants that they will go in with Abram to have a child so that the promises of God will be fulfilled. I see the need for the promises of God to be fulfilled. I will lay down my life and give a 
maidservant. And what, who was born? Ishmael. Ishmael. How many Ishmaels will you give in the name of laying down your life? Because by fact, by fact, by fact, this is not possible. That is not possible. That is not possible. And what do we have today? Yes, we have the Palestinians and the Israelis and they're all killing one another for thousands of years still. The only, the only answer, Jesus, through the cross for each one of them, like for us. Hey, you with me? Well, God must help us in this, man. God must help us in this. It will happen. God will help us. Then, what I was saying, there's Gideon. There's Gideon. He saw the need. He saw the need, man. He saw the need. These his enemies, they come and just they take all the food on the land. They take all the food on the land. So let's do something. Lazy, whatever, servant. No. Working hard, working hard, working hard to put all the food in the end of a hut, parscape with the Luxian Afrikaans. I don't know what's that in English. Put it in the hole and cover it so that the, the Philistines, Amorites, and all whatever rights don't come and steal the food. And there God comes and sit with him and say, Man, man of valor, dapper health. He says, You're not speaking to me. <laughs> Because by fact, this is our situation. I'm working. He's, he's helping with the need of the nation of God. But he was so helping with the need that he was arguing with the Son of God of, of, this, of the plan that the Son of God has for him to make a difference with 300 guys screaming and slamming some pots and whatever ridiculous strategy so that the spoils of the enemy will come to them. God could challenge you and then you can argue with Jesus Christ and whatever you're going through could be your excuse. But when you turn to God and allow him to speak into your life, my brother, my sister, there's a contribution. There's a role you need to play in this season of your life. Are you here? Are you here? When I was 27, I had a need. A need, a really big need. I said, God, where's my wife? I want to be married now. I'm 27. That's just before I lived for seven years with 30 guys in one house. <sighs> and uh, that's how God rewarded me for asking, where's my wife? And uh, I said, God, where's my wife? You stay with God. God, I lay down. I lay this, lay this wife down before you. Leave it in there. But you said there, I said, God, what do you want to say to me? And you know, when I really spend time with God, God said to me, your wife is 12 years younger. I'm 27, she's 15. Not going to work. Okay, Lord. And then God said to me, without, him asking, uh, without me asking, he said to me, I want your children to have impact in a certain generation where they will have a contribution in that specific generation. Amen. You know, I'm going there nearly for the 60s. A lot of, lot of uh, discount at a lot of places. <laughs> you can buy your groceries through me. Oh, it's on video. Okay. <laughs> I'm nearly 60 and now Jaden was sitting with this old man. You know, he's now turning 19 and... I nearly could have been his grandfather, but I'm okay with it. I will lay down my life with no image. But I knew that I knew that I knew. When I met Jeline and I thought she was married and I saw in the, in, in the conference and I was just, hmm, who's that lady? You know, look away and look where is the lady and binding the second I'm looking at a married woman and she wasn't married and five months later we got married. Oh, you are 27 and I am 39. 12 years. They didn't know it before the time. Amen. So the right time, the right one. We realized after the first fight, we realized if we met one year earlier and got married then, then one would be in jail, one in heaven. <laughs> we don't know who, but the one would have, we would have killed one another. <laughs> so God protected us. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm wasting time. Where are we now? Okay. Martha. The last one, Martha. So there's Jesus. There's a need. Everybody say there's a need. 
Food must be made. Hello, wake up call. Food must be made, you know? So the food must be made for the devil. No, for Jesus. So Martha in the kitchen. And looking out, and there's Mary sitting still, you know? Very super spiritual. Sitting there, you know, looking at Jesus. Jesus speaking to her and just sitting, just sitting. And then Mary, Martha had an issue with Mary. No. She didn't have an issue with Mary. She had an issue with Jesus. She said, Jesus, do you not care? Do you not care that I must do all the work and she can just sit there? Anybody been there? Not that you're angry at God, but you don't understand how some guys, even in the church, they work them. And some other guys, they come, and they very, look very holy, and this, and this, and this. But they will not get involved in this amount. Because I don't have time. I see. Also, no time to open your mouth, like we said a thousand times. There at Shell Ultra City, or there at the Pick and Pay, or just to tell somebody God loves you, or tell somebody you are very precious to Christ, or God's going to speak to you, or know that you are valuable. Or tell them, your granny's granny was not, wasn't a baboon. God created you in his image. Your granny's 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 granny had the image of God in her. Not the image of some stupid baboon. Don't believe in that Hamor's evolution. Now that you come from the beauty of heaven. Why can we not? Why can we not say that to somebody? Why must we be focused on ourselves and our own things? It's going to change in Jesus' name. It's going to change in Jesus' name. I'm still waiting for the guy coming in the service and say, can I testify about that? I did it with 20, 30 people and this is what happened. Please, I beg you. I maybe will give more than a one rent for you. You never know. Are, are, are you with me? But there's priority at the right time. There's a need for the kitchen. There's a need for some practical things in the kitchen. But there's a need for you to sit at the feet of Jesus. And you must know. Jesus said, Martha, Mary chose the right thing. The right thing for what? That they must never be made food. No, the right thing for now. Now, this afternoon, tomorrow morning, what is the need? That God wants you to address the need in your own life to be filled with the Spirit, to be filled with the Word, so that when you go out from the richness that is in you, you give to people. That when you speak, the wisdom of God is there. It's bringing solutions. So you better know, when is it time to be at the feet of Jesus? That is the need at that moment that must be addressed. And when is it time to be in the kitchen? Because it's sometimes... You just better be in the kitchen. No, he can be with Jesus. I don't have time to have time with the Lord. Rabbis, they're in the kitchen. Why can Jesus not be with you in the kitchen? Hello? I've said that also 2,000 times. You know that song that was written in the kitchen, remember? Who can remember? What's it? Oh, precious and French fries. Oh, that, oh, sorry, that was Siobhan's song. Uh, who know about his song? Who said that? Okay, you can have a cake on my account there. Praise God, 100 didn't remember it. <laughs> what am I saying? So it was this lady. Oh, you can have time in the kitchen. You can be muff man because of the need of the food. And they are not helping. And I must make all the food. And then I must do this. This lady was making food. She was washing the dishes. She was just there. But she had this time with God. And she wrote the song. And that song, God heard the song. And he said, that song must be on the lips of my church in the nation for the next how many hundreds of years. And he put it there on the, on the lips. Oh, no, uh, this was a song. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. You know the song? To worship you, oh, my soul. Rejoice, you know, here in the kitchen. Please help me, Lord. I cannot be anymore. No, 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 not like that. She wrote that song. She did what she did as 
as Eve unto the Lord in that kitchen. And the, the presence of God in the kitchen with her working herself frack, but she didn't work herself frack. She denied herself and walked with, and worked with Christ. And she just, what came from her heart, God said, I want it on the lips of my church, that quality. And he put it in the nations on the lips of his church. Oh, man, I beg you, with whatever need there is, if you have your kitchen need, your kitchen duties in your life, do it with God. And what you have can be spread out in the nations. God, come and do a work in our lives. Please, Lord, forgive us for selfishness. Forgive us for self-centeredness, Lord. Forgive us for finding the excuse in the one rand instead of the opportunity. Forgive us for informing you about our five loaves of bread and two fish and then sometimes walk away in the logic instead of sitting in your presence to hear with respect to what you have to say about it, Lord. God, I pray for our openness in the spirit. God, you said your sheep know your voice. Every man, woman here that, that gave their lives to Christ, they know, they know, they know your voice, Lord. While every head is bowed and eye closed, if you are here and you know that, don't know if you are saved. You don't know if you die today, if you're going to heaven. And you need to give your life to Christ. Yeah, you in Christianity, you in a lot of stuff, but you never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So that you know that you know if you die tonight, you're going to heaven. When every eye is closed, head bowed, if it's you, just raise your hand. I want to pray for you that you will come to Christ this morning. See that hand? Anybody else? Yes? Yes? Okay. Let's pray. Let's pray together with, and just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I come before you. I give you my everything. I accept you, Jesus. As my Lord and Savior, please come and live in my heart. You said if I accept you, I can become a child of the Father. I lay down my life at the cross. Satan, you lose me. I surrender to Christ. Thank you through the blood of Christ. I can belong to you now, Lord. Now I am saved my spirit reborn thank you that you will never leave me never forsake me in jesus name amen praise god hallelujah hallelujah